Hello. In this video, we would like to calculate the concentration of a saturated solution of scandium fluoride. In other words, we want to calculate its molar solubility. And the first thing that we always want to do in an equilibrium calculation is to write out the relevant equilibrium. So in this particular case, we start off with the scandium fluoride solid, and then we put it into solution. It's going to ionize to a very small extent, because it's a weakly soluble salt, and it's going to ionize. And we're going to see that for every one mole of scandium fluoride that dissolves, we get one mole of scandium 3 plus ion plus 3 fluorine ions, fluoride ions. So we notice one difference in this example compared to the previous examples is that in this salt we have a 3 to 1 ratio whereas in the previous videos we had either a 1 to 1 or a 2 to 1 ratio. The next step which we like to do is to write out our equilibrium constant expression. So recall that for the numerator we want to use the values that we've gotten as the products of the reaction. So our first figure here is going to be the concentration of scandium 3 plus and then we represent the concentration in units of molarity by our square brackets. Then we have our concentration of fluoride ion, or F minus. And we notice that we have our three here. So let me do one thing to remind us of how to write the equilibrium constant expression properly. We notice that whenever we have a stoichiometric coefficient that is not equal to one, we write that coefficient as an exponent in our equilibrium constant expression. Secondly, a thing to keep in mind with this type of equilibrium is that normally we would write the concentration of the reactants in the denominator. But remember we have this exception that whenever we have a situation where uh, one of the materials involved is either a pure solid or a pure liquid we omit that species from the equilibrium constant expression. So that gives us our equilibrium constant expression right here. So this is the proper form. And we also notice that we can set this equal to a numerical value, which we get from looking at the table. So let's write down what this is going to be. And this is 5.81 times 10 to the minus 24. Our next step is to uh, assign variables uh, for the concentrations of the scandium 3 plus ion and for the fluoride ion. So first, typically we're going to set let x be equal to the concentration of scandium 3 plus ion. One of the things that we keep in mind here, I'm not going to write out, but it's implicit in the method of solution, is that not only is X equal to the concentration of this particular ion, but since we only get one of these scandium 3 plus ions, when one of the molecules of scandium 3 plus dissolves, when it dissolves in solution, that in solving for X, we're also solving for the number of moles, the concentration of scandium fluoride in solution. That's kind of a key feature which I may not have mentioned in previous videos, but it's implicit in our method of solution. Secondly, we notice that for every one molecule, every one um, ion of scandium 3 plus that is generated, we get three fluoride ions. So we can let 3x equal the concentration of fluoride. So we're getting a three to one ratio. when scandium fluoride dissolves. Again, one thing to emphasize is that the assumption in the equilibrium that we've written is that 
The water in which we dissolve this compound is pure water before we dissolve the scandium fluoride. So the only possible sources of scandium 3 plus ion and fluoride ion are from this solid scandium fluoride that it's at. If that is not true, if there's already pre-existing scandium 3 plus or pre-existing fluoride, we have to solve slightly differently, which we'll show in future videos. So now the key feature is to take these expressions that we've written down and to substitute them into the equilibrium constant expression that is in the line above it. So let's do that. So scanning the three plus, that's X. So we can write down X there. Fluoride, just inside the brackets here, is equal to three X. So we'll be careful to write that. What was in brackets here, we're writing as parentheses. But then we also have to remember that in the equilibrium constant expression, the KSP, we also have this exponent of a three, which we make sure that we have to put that in there. So notice we have a three here, which comes up because we have a three to one ratio. But then we also have the three as the exponent, and that's because of the rules by which we have to write equilibrium constant expressions. So we need both of these threes, and if we leave out one of the threes, we are going to make a mistake. So the second step is, since we have this expression for a KSP, we can set the algebraic expression equal to this particular numerical value. So we get equals 5.81 times 10 to the minus 24. Once we've set up our algebraic expression to this point, all that is left to do is to solve numerically for the value x. So let's see how we do that. First thing to keep in mind is that we just bring down our variable x here, and then we have expression 3x to the third power. So that is 3x times 3x times 3x. So we're able to convert this particular expression to 27x cubed. And then on the right hand side, this continues as 5.81. And this is just the time sign, 10, 10 to the 24. The left hand side, since we have x times 27x cubed, using the properties of exponents, we can write that as 27 x to the fourth power, and again, it's going to be equal to 5.81 times 10 to the minus 24 power. We want to get x alone on one side of the equation. That's the standard technique of how we solve algebraic equations. So the next step in our solution is to divide each of the sides of the equation by 27. If we do that, we end up getting the expression x to the fourth power equals 0 0.2152 times 10 to the minus 24 power. Now, at this point, a typical method of solution would be to take the fourth root of each side. And that's perfect, perfectly fine to do that. But another way to think about how to solve this, which might be more efficient if we have an old style calculator, is to do the following. Is to first take the square root of each side. So we will take the square root of the left hand side and the square root of the right hand side. And we recall by the properties of exponents that if we take the square root of x to the fourth, that gives us x squared. Okay. And again, we can use our trick of solving on the right hand side by breaking it down into the square root of 0 0.2152 times the square root of 10 to the minus 24 power. And since we recognize that we have an even power of 10 as an exponent, it makes it easy for us to calculate the square root of that part. 
we do have to use our calculator to find the square root of 0 0.2152 and we see that that gives us a value of 0 0.4639 the square root of 10 to the minus 24 power is simply going to be 10 to the minus 12. Now notice that we still haven't solved directly for x. We've gotten from x to the fourth power to x to the square power. But it's a relatively straightforward idea to simply repeat a technique that we used in the previous step of taking the square root of x squared now. So we're using the idea that we can think of the fourth root as the square root of the square root. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So the square root of x squared is simply x. I can figure out the right-hand side as the square root of 0 0.4639 times the square root of 12, minus 12. So if we do that, we get 0 0.681 times 10 to the minus 6 power. The square root of 10 to the minus 12 is 10 to the minus 6. Now at this point, once we've solved for x, we want to convert our final expression into the standard scientific notation. So we definitely want to have exactly one non-zero digit to the left of the decimal point. So we can write this as 6.81 times 10 to the minus 7. And recall, X is the concentration of the scandium-3 plus ion, but it's also the concentration of the scandium fluoride solution when it's not saturated. So this tells us that both of these expressions are equal to 6.81 times 10 to the minus 7 molar. So we're able to calculate the molar solubility of a concentrated solution, of a saturated solution of scandium fluoride as being 6.81 times 10 to the minus 7 molar. So a couple of the important things just to recap is that in the process of writing the equilibrium constant expression, we end up with a 3x inside the parentheses and also a 3 as an exponent. And when this is converted, simplified, we get 27x cubed. The second thing to keep in mind is that in the process of solving for x, since we have to ultimately calculate a fourth root, we can do that as an iterative process by taking the square root of the square root. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.